At IFPRI, uh, our work on biofuels mainly looks at the impacts or the implications for growth in biofuels production uh, on agricultural markets uh, as well as energy markets themselves, and particularly with respect to how those effects might intersect with human well-being, that is to say food security or poverty. And that's been our primary lens through which we've been looking at the issue of biofuels. Uh, a lot of the work that we've publicized in the recent past has been examining the implications of major biofuels programs such as that in the U.S. in which we use, uh, in which maize is mostly used as a feedstock crop for ethanol production. Um, some of the criticism that we've had of that particular program uh, is not necessarily the principle of using, of making biofuels, but rather using that particular feedstock which is an incredibly important staple crop in many developing parts of the world, especially if you consider the proportion of maize and what it represents in the diets of people in southern Africa and many parts of sub-Saharan Africa and other places in the developing world as well. Uh, we've seen at least evidence that shows that there could be significant food security implications. So that's uh, one of the reasons why we've been a little bit critical of the U.S. program on ethanol, um, not to mention also some of the trade policies that are associated with uh, biofuels, for instance, the high tariff uh, against imports of ethanol from other parts of the world like Brazil. So I think in principle it should be noted that we're not against the idea of using biofuels. Obviously when you look into the future and what people will need for energy uh, to 2030 and beyond, there's no doubt that biofuels will have to play a part, certainly in terms of increasing the share of renewable fuels and moving away from fossil fuels. But um, I think the manner in which you do it is very important. And there certainly are ways in which biofuel programs could be designed that could have benefits. And I think we've started to see evidence of this. Um, for instance, in the case of Mozambique, which is a country case study uh, that we've that some initial work has been done on using IFPRI models, we've already seen that there's a great potential actually for poverty alleviation and perhaps even for greater food security outcomes if we design those types of programs so that they provide technological and other types of spillovers into food production, particularly that of staple crops. Um, and if the production of the feedstock crop, which in the case of uh, Mozambique would be Jotropha and poly sugarcane, if it's designed in such a way that you rely more on outgrower types of schemes, that is to say, a decentralized way of producing the feedstock rather than one single big plantation type of scheme, then the potential for poverty alleviation is even greater. We're looking now at other types of country case studies in places like Mozambique, India, uh, Tanzania actually is one because that's a, a food insecure country, uh, but also one that has been experiencing greater levels of growth and, and, it, is, and it has a lot of potential actually for uh, biomass production, rather the production of the feedstock material that could be used either in the current first generation or more advanced types of biofuel technology that we could consider. So that's a country that is in southern Africa and eastern Africa has a particular amount of interest. And so what we'd like to do for these particular kind of country studies is to provide some concrete guidelines to these countries as to how best they can organize the sector, how they can organize it in a way actually that provides some of those positive spillover effects that I talked to you about earlier. Uh, we also focus, uh, besides looking at food security and poverty, which are, has always been the mainstay of the work that we do at IFPRI, we've also been concerned about the environmental implications of biofuels. So for instance, what are the implications for land use and water use? The issue of uh, water use comes in, especially when you're considering feedstock crops like sugarcane, which in the case of Brazil is mostly rain-fed, but if you're talking about sugarcane for ethanol production in India, you're going to be talking a lot about irrigated um, uh, sugarcane uh, in that type of an environment. And given the water scarcity in many of the uh, regions of India, um, you might run into some problems if you were to scale up, let's say, ethanol production from sugarcane seriously. And there's a couple of other countries, like some of the um, uh, country case studies that I mentioned to you earlier, like Mozambique, Senegal, they're also considering uh, sugarcane um, because those are grown in particular parts of the country. So looking at the environmental constraints that might present themselves in the case of biofuels is important. But the land use issue is important, especially for climate change. A lot of concern has been voiced um, in terms of what biofuels, the changes in land use that are induced by biofuel programs uh, scaling up, uh, because in actual fact you might be actually undoing some of the positive carbon benefits that switching from fossil fuels towards biofuels might otherwise bring. So I think the issue of indirect land use change is very important. 
Uh, in the case of the EU, let's say some of their biofuel directives, there's been a lot of research attention that has been going on in terms of what the land use implications are, but also what are the implications for developing countries, and we're going to be partnering with a number of agencies, um, uh, and we actually, if we already is working on the implications of the EU directives as well as those in places like the U.S. So it's a fairly wide-ranging program, and it's something that I think goes beyond just looking at what happened in the in the last uh, f uh, food spike that we saw. Um, uh, if pre estimates were around 30 percent uh, attribution to the U.S. maize program uh, for ethanol, let's say, on the rise in global prices for maize in the 2000 to 2007 period. But we're looking actually beyond that to see um, how can we pr bring out some of the more positive aspects that biofuels can provide, especially if maybe if we focus on more towards domestic use where in a lot of developing countries there's a lot of need for renewable sources of energy for use in uh, domestic purposes, cooking, heating, lighting, and that has tremendous gender implications that I think we should also consider.